it's uh, really not only that we wanted to write a big book like this, but it's it's a a long term, uh, more than an idea, a long term enterprise. It begins with a certain understanding of urban planning or, or urbanism, Stadtplan, Städtebau, born uh, around 75 in Aachen. Aachen was at this moment uh, a center of not, of, uh, not only of architecture, they are still a center for very important things, but for architecture, urbanism, and theory, and theory and history. And there uh, was born there a group of, of uh, colleagues, young at that time, young colleagues, uh, sociologists, uh, and, uh, uh, and other uh, disciplines with a certain uh, inclination to neo Marxist approaches. And with a very, with a big admiration for the, for the uh, Italian school of urban planning. And two young colleagues decide at that time to write their PhD thesis in Italy on Italy. That's the first element of my explanation. The second point, these books have uh, a sense at first as German books written for the German public. As you can imagine, I cannot, it's not necessary to explain this, in Germany to deal with the history of, of Nazi dictatorship is for, for several uh, generations uh, a biographic obligation. And uh, everyone on his world. And that means that in Germany, Western Germany, and when I say Germany, uh, now I'm really, I mean only Western Germany because GDR had another history of, uh, of this uh, elaboration of their own history. And this is, <coughs> in our case, um, driven not by the, by the idea to fight the fascistic uh, columns and uh, the uh, nazistic doors. No, it's, uh, it's more. It's, uh, the, you can imagine the combination of this uh, social science-oriented uh, um, research interest, but not as a, a faculty for social, sociology or political science, no, but a faculty for architecture where the, 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 the built city or the planned city is at the center of investigation. And at the other side, it's interesting to understand history. It's not only to understand history, but that's the second point, or the third point, to, and to begin to understand the history of the own uh, country uh, through the built or planned city or the, the whole country. Taking, taking the, the, uh, the urbanism, the Städtebau, as the most important, as the, as the, as the principle of your investigation. And not to begin discussions on fascism theory and totalitarianism, etc. Et and this is, uh, and, um, a lot of people began to work with this intention, and uh, two of them, um, where uh, they, they uh, took a very uh, uh, strong dedication to them. One is Tilman Hallander. Tilman Hallander uh, became later professor in Stuttgart, and his uh, postdoc is the, the best investigation on 
how old a Nazi housing. And the other one is Harald Bonschatz. And Harald Bonschatz uh, came to West Berlin in the middle of the 80s, I think. And he began. Hmm? 78. <laughs> um, I uh, met him the first time in 87. Uh, and he began with other to, uh, to research Berlin, uh, not only uh, in, in, uh, like art historians, but more what are we doing now with this uh, Nazi heritage? And what we have to do it. What do other people do with such a patrimony? Therefore, the importance of Italy. This history, uh, years later, produced uh, 2001. Around 2001, the State of Schattenstein, Sarah Kunschatz, in his post. They work, it, it, it's, um, that's very important. This, uh, the following books are monographies. Monographies with a, 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 a certain approach, a coherence, and they have uh, not only, as I said, not only the mission to explain what in that time was done, but what is the situation now, and what, uh, where, which were the different stages of interpretation and of dealing with this uh, heritage. And this book, Stellenbaum Schatten Stalins, is, uh, I can say this, uh, the only monography with this, uh, with this uh, mission in, you cannot find in Russian uh, as a similar work. It's a pity, but it's so. But this and one is now, Russian. It? It's the well of Russian. They but now, yes, they are translating it. Or is it uh, it's published? Published. Huh? It's published. published? It's published now, the, the, the translation. And the initiative was of a Russian uh, editorial. And um, 10 years ago, Herbert presented with the uh, other police the similar book to Mussolini and it in Italy. And it is not the same approach, it's of course more advanced. And, uh, and this book is, and we know very well, the uh, bibliography, the Italian bibliography in Italy is still for us a very important difference. But repeat this, this is a German approach to the case of Italy. And after this, Harald asked me, do we uh, begin now to study the Iberian Peninsula? And I, th I think the day one day later, I said, yes, we have to do. And in the first time, we were so ingenuous that we uh, thought that we could write one book for the Iberian Peninsula. After one week, <laughs> we discovered it's not possible. Now, Harald uh, will present the book. This book was published some months ago. It's relatively new. And this is part of a official uh, investigation of the Deutsche Forschungsgemeinschaft. That's an institution who finances uh, such kind of research uh, for three or a little bit more years. That means that we could do also some uh, journeys to Mozambique and uh, throughout Portugal from the north to south for, for a lot of fields. You can 
see such a book is always a product of many, many people. And you can see here some. And the message you can see here too, the dictatorships of Europe before and after the Second World War are part of our common European history. The research about uh, these different dictatorships of Europe is necessary. For this research, it is necessary. That's our position uh, from the beginning a European view, a European cooperation, and a European interpretation. That's uh, our mission. But if we have realized it, others have to. <laughs> To uh, see. Okay, what did we? What, what have we found in the beginning? In the beginning, we have seen the urbanism of Portugal. There is nearly nothing in the books about the uh, <coughs> history of European urbanism. We have seen some, uh, today Paulo de Sica, a lot of uh, a lot of books, but only some few uh, science, some few sentences, nothing. You can find only some um, interpretation of uh, the urbanism after the earthquake in the 18th century in Lisbon. That's the only one, otherwise nothing. But we have found a lot of works to, to different aspects of the Salazar urbanism in Portugal. But not really an overview. Then we have found, looking at the, the general history about dictatorships, we have found Salazar dictatorship that was a boring, stagnant, backwards-oriented uh, dictatorship without any development at this time. Then we started with our research and we found that's not really true. We found that there was a process of modernization, a special process of modernization, for example, in the ed educational sector. This small country has realized during the dictatorships three new university cities. First one, the technical high school in Lisbon. Second one, the new university city of Coimbra. And third one, the university, real university city in Lisbon, not the technical, but the other one. These are three, but there are a lot of schools and so on that uh, we are realized in this time. Another thing is what we have seen here, where we didn't expect it, we didn't know it before. A lot of barrage, what, what is this in, in English? Staudinger. Uh, uh, you can, you can understand. Angola. And there was a 
you know, uh, optimization. optimization of the uh, urbanist control by, first of all, there was a, a very special minister, Duarte Pacheco, uh, one of the most uh, influent uh, urbanists uh, in Europe in the 20th century, I would say. I can't also in the you know, I have never seen such an influent person. He has, he was also, he was not only a uh, minister for, for urbanism, but he was also uh, mayor of uh, Lisbon, and he has created a very efficient development uh, uh, institution uh, for everything, uh, for, for uh, the preservation of monuments and the build, uh, the new social housing, everything. And, and there were, was a very efficient uh, um, kind of instruments, instruments of uh, urbanism, especially uh, uh, for, uh, for expropriation. In, uh, in the late 30s, most of Lisbon was expropriated uh, and uh, then there was a control about uh, how was the private house. And, and there, were, there were the financial resources, there was a financial program in the 1930s and last point, there was no urbanist know-how in Portugal and therefore it must be imported. And the, it was imported in Lisbon, especially the French urbanists, and in Porto, the Italian, from, it, it, uh, from fascist Italy. And uh, also a lot of urbanists were sent, especially to Paris, to learn urbanism. And, okay. The climax of uh, the Portuguese uh, dictatorship was the exhibition of the uh, Portugal world in 1940. 1940, you know, that's in the midst of the Second World War. There was the idea, should we do such an exhibition or not? They did. And it was an uh, exhibition that was, I think, was a the most important exhibition during the Second World War. And uh, 1940, you remember? 1940, Hitler's Germany um, occupied Paris. And Paris was the center of ref refugees uh, in Europe. And therefore, all these refugees had to go, but where was nearly no way anymore to fly from Europe, only from Portugal. And there were a lot of people <coughs> uh, going by Franco Spain, it was a great problem, to arrive in Lisbon and there were about 100,000 refugees in Lisbon uh, in the in the first, uh, first 40s. A lot of very famous German uh, people, uh, poets and so on, went this way. We didn't know it before. This is not so, uh, it's not, not so uh, uh, clear in uh, Germany. And most of the tourists don't know that this is maybe the most important, uh, the most uh, famous uh, work of uh, Salazar's architecture in uh, Portugal. It was built 1940 uh, in a uh, modern stone, but it was uh, stonified uh, in 1960, also in the, uh, during the dictatorship. And you, you see one of the messages is, uh, we have a very great history. The great history is the discovery of the world before long before the Spain, the Spanish uh, came. We are 100 years before the Spanish. That we could, could everywhere uh, read that they, that was the mystery. And here and in the front, is, that is uh, Heinrich Enrique 
der Seefahrer, the navigator. Uh, and uh, it is interesting, this history of discovery, there was no problem after dictatorship to continue with this history. This history is also this chair here is called Plaza uh, del Imperio. It is called still today. It is the Portuguese Imperio. This is the Plaza del Imperio in the year 1940. That's a, that's a picture. There were a lot of uh, buildings that were uh, destroyed and there was this new square. And this was the center of the uh, exhibition of the Portuguese world in 1940. And we did research to these two big cities, Lisbon, everything, housing, urban renewal, and so on and so on, infrastructure, also the regional planning, and also Porto. But then, also on the countryside, and this, uh, for us was also interesting that also like in Spain, there were a lot of uh, um, uh, <coughs> activities in the preservation of not only of buildings but complete historic towns. The city of Obidos was was as a city center, as a town center, that was protected in 1951. When we uh, when we did our research in, in, in Bologna in the 1970s, we we thought always it was the first <laughs> the first one that the historic center was protected. Well, it's, it's not true. A lot of uh, uh, other uh, examples. Like Obiosh, we have also uh, a chapter about Evora. Evora, a uh, uh, very uh, important story. And, and uh, a lot of things of the countryside. There was also a, a colonization program, an in internal colonization program. Well, this one not, not so uh, important. There were only some some small villages, but there were a lot of banks. Okay, and the program also here, this is the uh, Gimaraish. We are also uh, completely, uh, not only the, uh, the castle was rebuilt, it was finished. Yeah, there, were, there were some parts of the castle, but so, so fine, you can see also the newer parts. But also the whole the area was completely new. <coughs> and there's also a, a historic palace, of, a Episcopal uh, palace, and it's completely new. It didn't exist before. And it's uh, interesting, one year after the, the big uh, uh, <coughs> exhibition of 1940, was an uh, exhibition of the modern architecture, uh, the modern, uh, okay, the new architecture of the fascist uh, Germany uh, in uh, Lisbon, and it was a propaganda exhibition of the Third Reich, and uh, there should be one hundred thousand visitors for this exhibition. This exhibition was uh, shown also later on in Madrid, in, uh, in Barcelona, and it was not an exhibition to, to show uh, uh, <coughs> the, uh, the real uh, work of architecture and urbanism in Germany, but only the impression, the biggest thing. No housing, no social housing, nothing was there's a lot of things in this kind of in Germany, but it wasn't big. Uh, uh, responsible was, Albert, uh, was uh, Rudolf Wolters. Rudolf Wolters is the right hand of Albert Speer. Albert Speer, the most important uh, architect uh, in Hitler's Germany. And Wolters had, has uh, written a Tagebuch, diary, a diary, uh, and uh, he wrote, uh, we didn't want to show real things, but only that's what does make an impression. 
it is, uh, it is complementary to the military advance to show we are uh, cultural uh, the best and, uh, and uh, it's a very hard uh, uh, exhibition which only two years ago was uh, researched in, uh, in Germany. So far, nobody didn't want uh, to, to know so much about this uh, exhibition. And you can, yeah, you can see here on the left side, this is Duarte Pacheco, the, the strong figure in urbanism uh, in Portugal on the, on the left. And this Maybe Portugal is always uh, Portugal is not so uh, so, uh, so small. Uh, Portugal together with Mozambique and Angola is uh, like Europe. That's, uh, that's the message. Uh, but you can also see Portugal is not oriented to Europe, but is oriented to the ocean, to the south, to the colonies, to the imperium. There are not so much so many links, although there are no links to Spain. Spain is uh, important uh, during the, the, the wars, uh, 36 39, but, but in urbanism, uh, there are no real things. And, you know, in 1974, <coughs> there was a so called Nathan Revolution, the revolution of, uh, of uh, what is a NARC, NARC, flowers. Claveris. Si, in English, Claveris. And this is a, the monument for the revolution. Mm -hmm. And there was, a, there was a music piece, it's Grande La Vila Morena. Uh, with this music, this was a sign of the, uh, of the uh, fight against uh, the dictatorship uh, by, by the uh, revolutionary troops. And uh, here you see a flower. And, uh, and, and you can see that's a melody. It's, uh, but it's, um, the square is not so attractive, really. And, uh, but this is uh, important for us that we, uh, Max uh, uh, mentioned it, that for us is not only uh, the history interesting, but also how it is. Uh, um, mm, seen today. And for example, Duarte Pacheco is, is a, a very estimated figure as an engineer, not as a dictatorship uh, figure, but it is, uh, you can see it uh, when you uh, start with the metro on, uh, on the airport. There are a lot of famous figures, uh, Alvaro Cunial, and so on and so on, and, and, and also Duarte Pacheco. <laughs> that's, uh, that's very interesting. Okay. Uh, what we will say, but uh, I want to say at the end, what we have done, what we uh, wanted to do, is not a history of architecture. It is also not a history of uh, urban planning and not at all uh, urban history, but the history of urbanism. This means planning is one aspect, but the real production of town and landscape from different actors, uh, that's our issue. And for us it's very important European perspective to see Portugal, you can't understand this without the links to Europe, you can then understand the case of Portugal. And on the other side, every case like Portugal helps us to understand our own dictatorship better. Because you can see what is the specificity uh, of our dictatorship, what are the differences, what, are, what, what is no specificity. And uh, this, if you look at books about, if they ex exist about uh, urbanism in dictatorships, they have usually a tunnel view. And they can't not really explain 
what is the specificity uh, of uh, this particular we, we have uh, tried to do this for Portugal and we will try yeah I think in a few months we will be able to present the the book on the Spain case the Spanish case uh, I think it's very important uh, to to underline this point, the, the traditional, the, the hegemonic planning history uh, with the center in the Anglo-Saxon world, but very, very well represented in, in a lot of countries, uh, has other questions uh, for, for Great Britain, for the USA, for Canada, Australia, that's the dictatorship is not a, it's not a problem. It's not a, a, an important matter of the own urbanistic history, of the own history. That's for us a very important point. If we think with a very uh, broad uh, understanding of the term dictatorship, if we translate every year in the 20th century in a unity, a, a, a combined with the history of the European countries, nations, maybe we will state that mostly in Europe we had and still we have dictatorships. And we say that the university, and we say when we present our our work, our discipline, <coughs> they are they are a lot of uh, political, economical. <coughs> cultural uh, uh, determinants. But what does it really mean? And usually the first reaction is to say the aesthetic of fascism, a stylistic uh, buildings. We, uh, of course, we know, we, we, we find in, in a lot of uh, countries uh, a specific aesthetic. But we say that's not the important point. Uh, urbanism, understood as we do, is an instrument, it has functions. And that was for us very and is very important. It's not only a matter of oppression. No, dictatorships use urbanism to integrate some groups of, of the population. And, uh, and this, uh, for instance, with housing for uh, middle classes, for certain new middle classes, with university campus for the new elite, and so on. And this is a point we can understand better uh, that dictatorship could survive uh, so many years. And uh, the next point will be Spain. We are now finishing the case of Spain. Uh, I think it's important to say we, our matter is European urbanism and therefore we have in this book uh, some uh, studies on the col colonial uh, urbanism of Portuguese it was very big, very important and uh, in the case of Spain it's of course less but uh, we have in, in this uh, book uh, colonial uh, urbanism too and uh, finishing our presentation, I uh, want to, to repeat. We have a motivation that you can understand only if you know the German history. But I have to add, like Harald, our perspective is a European. We cannot understand Germany without studying, for instance, the Spanish case. And Guernica is German history too. Real. It's not, it's not a, a community uh, construct now, it's exposed because we want to be Europeans or and, and European Union uh, members. No, it's really uh, these this, this, this links existed in that time and we ignore them very often. And uh, these uh, links existed uh, in a very important uh, wise during these dictatorships. They, were, they knew from each other and, and they uh, emulate and copy 
and it, it was a competition and urbanism was a very important uh, tool of the competition in that time urbanism was maybe more important as an element to represent the, a state a regime than today and um, when we uh, are, will uh, be finished with the book on, on Spain of the Dinero Franquismo from 38 until 59, we will have uh, a lot of knowledge for us. And I'm very, really, very curious uh, um, to to see which will be your reaction because your understanding, your research, your interpretation, your access to your own history is, of course, another one. But we have, and, and I think uh, urban history is a, a very good bridge. We know from each other a lot. We are not foreigners. Uh, we, are, we, we know, and, and I think this books and this interpretations on other countries uh, can be very useful. Uh, José Luis Sainz Guerra, for instance, uh, uh, wrote with other colleagues uh, a, a lot of years ago, uh, 30 years ago, a book on the German Siedlungen. Uh, 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 I, I would, would like to finish inviting you to go to Germany to study, for instance, Weimar or Nuremberg or Berlin. I think this could be the next step to understand better the, the other countries and, uh, of course, the, the other country. And I think this is, in Europe, the best way to uh, go to, uh, to this new program, I think we have all, to build a, a history in a global perspective. Uh, at first, we have to understand this European uh, sphere, this European dimension. And, uh, I think I can thank you for your attention and uh, you can of course uh, make questions and we will try to answer them.